Innovation unlocks possibilities to do things better. Change is hard, but it's not reasonable to leave this problem to future generations to clean up our mess. There is no way in which humans will exist in the future without technology, and there's no way that nature will exist unless it can do so side by side with humans. I think the future of the future is also for young people. We need to encourage people to look at it. 啊，来产生一些独特、新颖的、有价值的一些事物。Real breakthrough comes when you have the bravery to step into the unknown and to do something really new and unprecedented. You have to be willing to break with the comfortable assumptions of the past and to do something new. Without that pioneering spirit, you would never have any innovation in any industry. We have to think big. There is no time for compromise when it comes to what we want to accomplish. Innovation is what shapes our future. Deforestation is something that the entire world must be made to care about. Without biodiversity, there's really no saying whether humans themselves can survive. Or whether we even should. Tofa White is a conservationist who is using innovative technology to preserve the planet's forests for future generations. And up here, you know, it's very sort of quiet and peaceful. This tree is amazing. He's on a mission to save rainforests, the lungs of our planet, which sustain the lives of over 50 million species. Half the world's rainforests have been destroyed since the 1960s. Some say the Amazon could have completely collapsed in just over 40 years. There is no future that we want to live in that doesn't involve forests. It's important that all of us come up with innovative solutions to help people there on the ground find a way to stop what is essentially illegal destruction of their environment. Tofa is pioneering an approach to environmental protection that is taking root across the world, and this innovative solution is based on very simple technology. We're using cell phone technology.、Um, we're using people on the ground. We're using apps. We're using all these things that already exist to bring it all together around a problem that nobody had thought to solve with those things before. The Rainforest Guardian, as it's known, records sound in natural environments, including that of human activity, like chainsaws and vehicles. An AI-powered app analyzes the audio data for indicators of forest destruction and provides real-time alerts to local rangers. So they can take action quickly. So people there on the ground, whether it's indigenous groups, police, NGOs, they get these alerts. They're able to respond. They listen in. They know where it is. They collaborate. And they're able to get out there and stop it. So this is a chainsaw coming in over the past hour、uh, from Sumatra. This is really unfortunate because it's very, very close. But as we can see, it's been reviewed by rangers as well, so they should be able to get out there and stop it. It's an innovation that will increasingly be used in the future to combat deforestation and animal poaching, and Tofa has the perfect laboratory on his doorstep to refine the technology.、Uh, we're in a redwood forest about、uh, an hour south of San Francisco.、Uh, this here is about a 260-foot redwood, which is a great, great one for us to test putting a guardian up. And what's great about this spot is that there's no cell phone service, so it's、uh, it's very similar to a lot of the places in the rainforest that we sort of work in. The device is powered by a set of solar panels. Its design protects it from humidity and sun exposure, and antennas enable it to upload the sounds of the forest to the cloud. It's easy to install as long as you can climb trees that are hundreds of feet tall. But this is plenty high enough for us to actually put one of these guardians up. And even now, when you stay quiet, you can hear the birds. You can hear the rustling of the wind in the trees. You can hear the rain in the distance. So that's what we're trying to set out to do: is pick up these sounds, understand the forest when we're not around. The devices act as the ears of rangers across the planet. They've been installed in ten locations, covering six thousand square kilometers of rainforest and four billion trees. But intelligent listening devices promise more hope for the future of the planet. They are also revolutionizing environmental science through the capture and analysis of audio data. Known as bioacoustics, the most interesting stuff in nature happens when people aren't watching. 
And the ability to listen in and hear it and sort of learn more about how nature is interacting with itself when we're not around, that's really what's amazing. Bioacoustics, driven by AI, means researchers can monitor and study the behavior and diversity of species in a more sophisticated and effective way than ever. It is unlocking a future world of conservation. Uh, and that's what's really exciting to me. What are the ways in which this sort of listening in our nature tells us about things that we never would have thought were there, things that we never were intended to hear, uh, the mysteries of nature that, um, that have been hidden from us for so long. This innovative technology also offers a brighter future for the world's oceans. The waters off West Cork are actually one of the best places in the whole world to go whale watching. We have amazing wildlife right on our doorstep with over 25 species of cetaceans recorded in Irish waters to date. Marine scientist Ema Keevney is about to deploy Ireland's first ever real-time hydrophone listening device. Bioacoustics is an evolving discipline that has really benefited from the onset of innovative technologies and has allowed scientists to peer inside the secret world of whales, to listen to them in real time and to use AI and machine learning algorithms to classify each species. The need for greater knowledge about the humpback whale has never been more urgent. Increased noise from shipping is threatening the species. Without change, the future looks bleak. Noise pollution is a particular issue for cetaceans because they rely heavily on sound for their survival. That involves communication, navigation, hunting prey, avoiding predators and finding their mates. We've lost more than 60% of our wild marine mammals in the last 50 years. This data that we're collecting um, with the Smart Sounds Whale project can be used to inform policy. We'll understand more about the effect of noise pollution from shipping on these species, and ultimately it will be able to contribute to the conservation of these animals. From protecting natural habitats to learning more about the species that inhabit them, innovative technology will play a crucial role in how humans relate to the natural environment in the future. There is no way in which humans will exist in the future without technology, and there's no way that nature will exist unless it can do so side by side with humans. There is a new frontier of discovery in front of us when it comes to the natural world. There's so much left to see, and this is the only moment for us to gather it before it all changes. This urgency to innovate is central to overcoming the greatest challenge facing the planet, climate change. We do not yet have all the answers in how we can even prevent climate change. New ways of doing things will have to be devised. New technologies will have to be devised. Replacing fossil fuel energy with sustainable solutions is the first critical step and digital and intelligent technologies like AI are revolutionizing renewable power. But reducing carbon emissions in the future is going to require more radical innovations. It's going to mean using technology to physically extract carbon from the atmosphere. One woman and her team are taking the challenge on. We're literally capturing CO2 from the atmosphere. And it sounds like a bit of magic, but it's not. That's how we put people in spacecraft and in submarines. We've done so for decades. And what's different about what carbon engineering is doing is that we designed a new way of doing things that use some clever chemistry to do it at massive climate relevant scale and at low cost. Canadian energy company Carbon Engineering are leading developers of an innovation called direct air capture a new technology that sucks carbon dioxide molecules out of the atmosphere using a repurposed air conditioning tower. What you see behind me is something called the air contactor, where we move massive amounts of air through the system. The air comes in contact with a strong basic solution that's the first step in the process. We then take that liquid over to a pellet reactor we have on the other side of this tower here. We precipitate out pellets it's like little seashells that contain a much higher concentration of the atmospheric CO2. And then finally, we take those pellets and heat them up to about 900 degrees Celsius. And now that CO2 is available to make a carbon product or to put safely back underground. The other chemicals can go back and go pick up some more carbon dioxide. The need for innovative carbon capture technology like this is critical and becoming more urgent every day. 
We've added all of this carbon dioxide to the atmosphere. Climate scientists today say that we might need to scrub 10 to 20 gigatons, 10 to 20 billion tons of CO2 back out every year by the time we get to 2050. The scale of the challenge is vast, but so is Laurie's ambition. This is our first commercial scale plant in the Permian Basin in Texas. This facility, once complete, will remove a million tons of atmospheric CO2 per year, which is the equivalent of 40 million trees. Innovators like Laurie are the kind of bold thinkers needed to help avert catastrophic climate change in the future. You know, I'm a mom, I have kids, I want to leave our planet with a healthy amount, a safe amount of atmospheric CO2 for the future. But also, I'm an engineer and I know that we know how to solve this problem. We have a responsibility to solve that problem today. It's not reasonable to leave this problem to future generations to expect that they will clean up our mess. Meeting the challenges of the future demands bold solutions, and few are bolder than automation. Tasks once done by humans, from cleaning to financial trading, are now being completed by highly efficient machines. The car industry in China is helping to drive this seismic change, and one innovator has his foot on the accelerator. Su Qing is the president and chief architect of Huawei's autonomous driving product. Su Qing believes automated vehicles promise a much safer future for transport, one where countless lives will be saved. Many technological, regulatory and commercial challenges remain before the dream of autonomous driving can be realised. But many of the hard yards have already been done on this long, pioneering journey. Critics of the automation revolution worry it will cost jobs, but it promises to solve many of humanity's challenges, and it is the future. The automated vehicle industry is predicted to be worth $550 billion by 2026. It may take another 10 or 20 years, but I think autonomous vehicles will make transportation safer and more productive. Within the medium-term future, we will see fleets of connected autonomous vehicles on our roads, and that will be good for everybody. The brain of each autonomous vehicle is an onboard supercomputer supported by an array of sensors that see and feel its surroundings. The technology behind this automated revolution, from advanced camera and laser systems to intelligent sensors and new mapping techniques, depends on artificial intelligence. The mapping center collects data from vehicles and analyzes it to provide real-time updates on constantly shifting urban environments. Autonomous driving is still in its infancy, but the technology promises a brighter and more efficient future, not only for transport, but also for cities. 
Creating solutions for future challenges is a risky business. Challenging received wisdom and attempting to disrupt established industries with no guarantee of success demands courage and conviction. And it's this that sets innovators apart. You need to be willing to work on some stuff that will not work out. Risk-taking is essential. Entrepreneurs, people who want to change the world in a particular way that they care about, those are the people that are going to take those risks and those are the people that are going to start new companies. Val Miftikov is staking his future on trying to revolutionize aviation, an industry that is famously resistant to change and to the challenge of tackling climate change. Everybody's building electric cars now. You have electric trucks, you have hydrogen trucks. So everybody else is doing better and better. But aviation, we don't have a solution. Aviation hasn't changed fundamentally since the early 20th century. And finding scalable greener technologies to power planes has proved notoriously hard. Everything that we do um, is pretty much done for the first time. Every time you have challenges and you solve them, and uh, that's how you push forward. Flying in the face of received wisdom and taking calculated risks is something that innovators like Val embrace in the quest for developing new technologies. I'm a balanced uh, risk taker. Most of our team is, is like that as well and culture of the company. So we are open to taking calculated risks. You do not have such thing as zero risk scenario, right? Without it, we wouldn't have any innovation uh, in any industry, really. Val's solution for zero carbon flying is hydrogen power. The only meaningful source of energy is hydrogen for zero emission aircraft. We need to look at credible ways to get us there without violating the laws of physics or creating new science, but we need to make it happen. Creating meaningful change on an industry level is a daunting challenge. But the bold thinking that Val represents is exactly what is required to convince established players to adopt new perspectives which will improve the future. Like with any new technology, you know, there are a lot of doubters and there is a lot of inertia in the industry to just continue doing uh, what we're doing. People are talking about uh, you know, various challenges. We think all those challenges can be overcome and the best way to persuade people is to actually demonstrate it. Without that pioneering uh, spirit, you would never have any innovation in any industry. Technology can help to deliver brighter futures, and it is younger innovators that will drive this change. We rely on future generations in order to innovate because those are the ones that are going to first understand how we have come so far through education, and then see what else can be done. Chang Yu is part of this new generation of innovators on a mission to reshape our future for the better. We want to extend human capabilities beyond physical presence. We believe that will transform the way we live and work and make our world a safer and happier place. He's the young mastermind behind startup Extend Robotics. Yeah, we are connected and good to go. A small UK-based startup with a big vision. Everyone has done video chat in office, at home. But what if you can not only chat, but also able to do physical tasks over the internet? Imagine how life would look like with that type of technology. Chang's vision is a future where humans and robots will work together, enabling complex tasks to be completed remotely. Basically, we are utilizing virtual reality technology into robotics so that people can actually immerse themselves in a remote location in 3D. At, at the same time, very intuitively operate the robots, only using gestures. Young innovators like Chang are dreamers, a quality he believes is vital if his generation are to create the innovations of the future. Great advancement of the technologies comes from young people's ambition, and we really need to cherish this ambition from young innovators that could have the potential to change the world the big way. It's the innovators being nurtured today who will help overcome the global challenges of tomorrow.
This is a vital chance for innovation to shape the world's future for the better. There is a lot of potential for entrepreneurs and innovators today because there are huge problems to solve and with those come huge opportunities. We have to support the next generation to innovate creatively and freely. You need to be a dreamer, you need to be committed to making uh, the future different and better. Our技術創新就怎麼能真正的幫助可以解決人類的問題,推動社會的進步,帶來這樣一些福祉。